Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome out to your daily currency recap. This is Sankate, and let's break down uh, today's market price action. This is a Tuesday, July the 9th. Let's get into it. As always, we'll be breaking down today's market price action. Take a look at broader markets. Take a look at our currency baskets, and then we'll take a look at some possible setups ahead. Let's get into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80 percent of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. As we jump with the market analysis, let's just jump right into our market performance and the news of the day. Well, nothing really. Today, it was a quiet day in the market, both in the equities and the currencies. So we're seeing uh, low volatility, quiet movement across the board, not just in the currencies, but across the board. Now, if you take a look at the numbers, well, today, well, this was not an exciting day to trade. You can see that we we barely budge over uh, you know, let's say 0.2%. I mean, things are all in between this 0.11% range. Um, again, we have the yen that's being the worst one, 0 0.30, which again, continuing with this trend. So outside of the yen crosses, it was just a quiet day. Now, if you take a look at in the equity markets, what do you see? Same thing, S&P flat, the world stock index is flat. Seeing a little uptick in the crypto markets, again, after uh, selling off last week, you're seeing a bit of a relief rally here, but nothing too major here. Now, gold slightly up, oil slightly down. So you can see that nothing is really moving, which is, again, consolidation that we're seeing across the board. Now, if you take a look at the crypto markets, what do you see here? Bitcoin rising the most at 2.35% and Ethereum at 1.93%. But remember, we are seeing these big moves in a in a down market. So you got to be very careful looking at these numbers because a lot of times these numbers can easily sell off after these bounces. Now, as far as our outlook for the broader market goes, well, nothing really has changed. But uh, let's take a look at the chart today. Now, if you take a look at the chart, what do you see? Again, we have seen a nice breakout the last few days. You know, we have seen a consecutive run, you know, day over day. So with today's candle, it seems like the market does seem to be uh, tired a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised either we go in this little consolidation phase or we pull back. So remember, the prior resistance is now the support. And well, oftentimes we see this pullbacks that we easily get bought out when it, when it really uh, tested the support level here. So something I think uh, could happen in the next 20, 48 hours. I'll be expecting uh, some of that kind of price action. I think at this point, uh, we're probably stalling here. Now, as far as the news front goes, well, you can see that we are seeing a lot more news events in the second half of the week versus first half of the week. We have the um, the Fed shares today, and again, nothing really came out of it. They did caution sign over, you know, rate cuts. So I think we're just kind of stuck here in the middle, not really going higher, not really going lower. It is where it is. Now, with the RBNZ rate statement today, that's due tonight. I think this is, again, another one that we'll be watching they're expecting no uh, sort of change. But remember, it's all about what they say in the statement. If they sound dovish, we'll see the KB fall. If they come out less dovish, I think that's probably be better for the currency. But just the way where the KB is right now, it's also, also not moving much. So I think we probably will see a move one way or the other since nothing is really getting priced into this uh, report. Remember, as we go into Thursday, we have the US CPI data. Again, that will move the dollar. But I think until then, we'll probably see a back and forth price action. So let's just jump into our currency analysis, take a look at what the velocity scores are telling us, and then we take a look at some trades ahead. Now, with our velocity scores, what is it really showing us? Well, there's a lot in the middle. We are seeing a better price action in the Aussie, which again, has been the consistent trend. Uh, the dollar and the CAD, they're bouncing li slightly higher, but again, nothing really major. If you take a look at the trend, then it's not the strongest trend score. The pound, you remember this is the one that we were watching since they had a breakout last week, which is getting a slight pullback. So really out of all, the only thing that stands out is the Japanese yen, which again has been the best pair across the board. Cryptos again, they're all plus one, but I wouldn't really be looking into buying this. I think I would be more interested in you know selling those rallies instead of those buying 
buying those rallies. So let's just jump into a possible trades ahead and see what we can find. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest US-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? And as we uh, take a look at the trades, let's just jump right into what's happening in the bond markets. Remember, I always talk about the correlations and what is it telling us? You can see that it's a whole lot of nothing going on here in the bond markets. Um, we had the U.S. jobs aboard in between, but really, this thing is just stalling right here. If you go in the higher time frame, or even go in the daily time frame, you no, know, we're just still range bound for now. So I think that's really where we are. We are range bound in a lot of things, and I think that's where. We'll see a bigger breakout when everything start to break out along with it. Now, if you take a look at the dollar, dollar is doing the exact same thing. We have the support and resistance levels, and it's just going back and forth. So whenever you get a range bound trading, it's better to take a look at these uh, support and resistance levels versus trending move where you know we're looking at higher high and higher low, and we're looking at a lot more of that kind of price action. So that's really where we are. So not really excited uh, to do a jump on the dollar here until it really breaks some of the key levels. Now, yen, on the other hand, continues to be the best short. And I think that's where we continue to want to be on this yen short side. Now, Swiss franc is the one that I talked about. I'm waiting for the trend score to go negative on this one. It's just range bound here. I'll look for a break below and then jump in some pairs. Euro is not doing a whole lot. As I said, this thing is also just in that range you know we're in the top of the range instead of the bottom end of the range the pound which had a nice breakout is just pulling back so i'm drawing my line here as long as it stays above that support i'm okay if it falls back below then we are back in the range the canadian dollar had an added recovery but take a look at it this thing is also working with the range as well so a lot of ranges if you take a look at it the aussie is the only one that seems to have a nice run but remember, our job is to pair the best versus the worst. And based on what we are seeing, Aussie against the yen seems to be the best play here. Now, if you take a look at the Kiwi, well, Kiwi is uh, going sideways for the most part for the last uh, couple of months. So we have the RBNZ tonight. And this is where it gets tricky because you're trading the, you know, you're looking at something that's not really moving. So we are going to see a reaction off the news. And I think at this point, I'm just neutral in this one. I'm not really going bullish or bearish i think whichever level it breaks we got this resistance here we got the support here any break of these levels is where we're going to guide uh, our our position but i think until it stays range bound i have no interest in trading so i'm not looking to trade this going into the news but i'll be looking at the post um you know the reaction and then uh, make a decision off of it uh so really if we t as we looked at everything Aussie in, again, this is the only one that looks the best. You can see that this thing has been running quite a bit. So, again, this is where it gets tricky because now if you want to go long on this one, well, I, you know, it's overbought on the RSI. It, it does look extended. So, you know, but if you look at the, the, the chart pattern here, this is, again, making a nice little high base. So I think uh, you want to continue trading this with caution, move your stops. And again, if things turn over, well, you're out of it sooner than later. So that's really where we are at. Now, as far as the RBNZ goes, I think we want to, I want to pay close attention to the Aussie Kiwi pairing. Take a look at it. We are up against a very key resistance, which is around that 110 area. So if it breaks above that, then that's a clear divergence between Aussie and Kiwi. And it might be worth taking a look at Aussie Kiwi currency pair. Now, if Kiwi strengthen on that news... Now, we got a pair of Kiwi against the worst, and I think in, in that scenario, I'll be going with the Kiwi Yen, which is, again, making a nice little high base. We can take a look at stuff like Kiwi Swiss Franc, um, you know, where we can find some some nice little relative strength of weakness. 
we got some uh, levels. So a lot of bases forming here, and I'll be looking for a breakout off of that. And in conclusion, market again, I think it's likely to consolidate or pull back. But meanwhile, we have the RBNZ that's in focus tonight. Outside of that, just, just keep the powder dry. As I always say, when there's not a whole lot of activity, you want to be more on the sidelines. But then be around when you know there's going to be volatility, which I think will probably be more volatility Thursday and Friday when we get the uh, U.S. inflation data. But meanwhile, I'll be just my focus going to be on the uh, Kiwi currency crosses overnight. Thanks for joining here. See you in the next one. Happy trading.